Cookies, donuts, they all go good in coffee. So, anyway, <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, I want to read uh, all 10 verses, and then we'll go back through and kind of line by line go through a few thoughts within them. Uh, let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We ask that you do... Bless our time together. Help us to open our minds uh, as we learn. Continue to let us be guided that uh, that pathway that you have us on may, uh, may be seen. Help us to glorify and praise you every step of the way. And we just continue to ask that, that light that shines in us be radiant for others to see. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first ten verses of Galatians chapter 6. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest also you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Now, this chapter starts out, anyone that we see overtaken in a fault, anyone we see that is... Uh, stumbling, that is burdened, that is, that is carrying a load that uh, maybe they are not supposed to be carrying, uh, which happens to all of us from time to time. We think we can, we think we can handle it, and then things get out of hand, and here we are. Um, so, but if we hear of someone, or if we see somebody downtrodden, troubled, feeling inadequate, you know, we're instructed not just here, in, but in multiple times across the way to be a help to them, to help pull them back up out of that mud. Uh, and that's what verse one is all about. The last part of verse one also says, consider yourself also, do it in meekness. Uh, Jesus makes a big deal about maintaining humility in all that we do. Uh, because anyone who is exalts themselves, then they will be humbled by God. Anybody who comes in humbleness, thank you. They will be exalted. You're welcome. I had to finish my thought before I stopped speaking. Otherwise, I might not get it back. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are in Galatians chapter six. I read the first ten verses, and now we're kind of going line by line, talking through some some thoughts, talking about helping those that need help, even when it's just a door. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Thank you for the illustration for today's. <laughs> I feel like I can sit down now. <laughs> you know, I would <laughs> so, uh, considering yourself, uh, don't dwell on that encouragement for your own sake. You know, I did that. I helped them get through that. Uh, they're better because I'm in their lives, because that's just a dangerous state of mind to live in. It's not us. It's the, it's the compassion and the love and everything that, that God gave us to utilize. Those are tools, uh, like, like so many other, within the fruits of the Spirit that we have to help others' lives get better. And helping others' lives get better helps our life get better as well. But, and it's slippery because, you know, yes, we want people to know, uh, but there's a difference between making, making an act known and then bragging. And it's like teaching our, our 10 and 13 year old about that right now is is interesting because what they see 
uh, has bragging is, is sometimes just them just, hey, I did I did a good job on that, yes. And then the other one's like, why are you bragging about doing so good? I'm like, no, I was just congratulating myself. And but, and then, but when it's like, hey, I beat you, <laughs> or, uh, when they're playing, a, like when they had their slumber party and there's four of them playing a game side by side and uh, it was interesting because you could see the personalities come out in, in who the ones who are more more outward uh, in their proclamations go and then the ones who, <laughs> <laughs> it, let's just say it was an even mix. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Well, I did not have a sidewalk out from my front porch yeah. to this you know, sidewalk, and walkers don't do well in grass, Yeah, and so I ended up falling. So my daughter and her husband bought the square blocks, like to make patio things with, Right. but to make my walker to work on it, they had to be about this far apart. So when the kids came for that year, that Halloween, it kept getting caught in there, and I thought, oh, what if one of them falls? Yeah. So I put them together, and so they put another row of blocks. Well, Sandy Benton came up and helped me, and we put down eight blocks, and it went really well. The next week, I had bought eight more blocks, and I, no matter what I did, I couldn't seem to get it to go right. So then I thought, what did Sandy and I do different? prayed first. So I went back to the house and sat down and prayed. Came back out and it done in no time. So Very good. Yeah. It's good to have that help and remember where to start. Yes. So. Uh, and verse 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We're called to help bear that bear, bear that burden. Now, uh, over in Romans 15, once again, you don't have to turn there. I'm going to read it. You can turn there if you want. But Romans 15, uh, specifically verse 1, says, We are strong. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Sound familiar? Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that are reproached the thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have good hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grants you the like-minded to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's Roman 15, Romans 15 the first six verses kind of parallels what we're talking about here in, in being there for the infirmities for the, for the troubles for the sake of others fulfilling the law of Christ um, and that's a fantastic example there's two illustrations in one day you're you're on the right track yeah. everybody else was getting worried that they were going to have to do all the talking this morning thank you <laughs> um, for if a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing he deceives himself. That's so. There's two, two. There's a handful, but a couple of quotes specifically that I like seeing all the different wordings of and iterations of. This is one of them. If a man thinks himself to be something, then he is nothing. And then another is God is no respecter of persons. Um, the each of the different contexts, but uh, but they're each uh, used a number of times uh, throughout the New Testament and in different situations so that it's not just, hey, this group of people is misbehaving, so they need to know not to be exhorting themselves. It's, it's, it's bigger than that. Uh, Romans 12, 3 says, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. The first scripture that I ever memorized, thank you, Veggie Tales. You have to, you have to remember that I, that I, I came into uh, I came into the family of God later, later in life that, than, than many, so uh, I and I started watching Veggie Tales when we had Soraya, and I saw they had this uh, lo this uh, this live uh, sing along. Uh, it was fantastic, and uh, every time that if you've seen Veggie Tales, you got that they got that tuba. Every time that horn, that first note, Soraya's like. 
I must go to my people. And she's right there at the TV dancing around and everything. But one of the messages in, in the one that we had seen was Philippians 2 verse 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than yourselves. So looking at that humility in everything we do, exactly as they're talking to uh, with the Galatians right now, in making sure that you're, you're able and willing to be a help, but it can't be, it, it shouldn't be with a boastful mind. And it says it in, in Romans as well. Paul encountered a lot of similar issues within the places that he went. And he's writing, you know, you can see some of the churches had a very specific message for what they were going through. And it was only to that church, uh, only to that area. And then you see some of these others where he's telling three, four different uh, letters, the same, the same, same message in some parts. And we see that in our own community. We see that in our, you know, friends that you have, people that you work with. You, know, you may have a, a body of believers that doesn't go to this church that you that you fellowship with from time to time. And you see some of those similarities where you say, oh, that, that letter is clearly for us. And, and then you see some of the differences that, that we don't, uh, that we do our best to speak in love. But that's a whole other, whole other topic. We're on bearing one another's burdens for today. So, verse 4, let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. The first few times I read this, and, and just like everything else, every time you read it, it's, it's kind of something different. But this passage specifically, it, it, it can almost be confusing because uh, it's almost like a, a while back, we, uh, one of the things that I showed you guys talked about how if David would have Prozac, we never had Psalms up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, you look at this, like, bear one another's burdens. Don't think yourself to be high and mighty. Um, and let every man prove his own work. Bear your own burden. So if you're if you're not reading through and, and really diving in, it sounds counterintuitive because, well, am I supposed to help others or am I supposed to help myself? Yes. The answer is yes. You do both by doing both. Sometimes the best way for you to help somebody else is by helping yourself. Is that backwards? What did I do? Can be vice versa. Yeah, it, it absolutely can. <clears throat> and sometimes the best, yeah, it, it, it's you, you both can't of those help things. others if you don't take care of yourself first. Right. Which, uh, First Corinthians. Did I mark that one? I did a bad thing and didn't mark one. So. When uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, Paul's talking about the Lord's Supper and he, uh, verse 28, uh, 26, 27, 28 say, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, wherefore, whoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Uh, much like Jesus uh, telling everyone, hey, if you have something against your brother, you leave that offering. Don't, don't take your offering until that is taken care of. You have to, there has to be peace in the water before you can give an honest and worthy offering. Because otherwise, it's filled with strife, turmoil, and, and worry, and doubt, and all the things that consume us as people. That's what ties all of this together in how we're bearing one another's burdens and our own at the same time. Because the, the instruction is, you know, you have to examine yourself. You have to prove your own work and bear your own burden. Well, how can you expect somebody else to help you with your burden? I, the thought that came to my mind was like if you go help a friend move and you got to take a couch down three flights of stairs. but So you're trying to help them bear that burden and then they're out having lunch, not trying to bear their own burden at all. That couch isn't going anywhere. That's an oversimplification, but it's that's that on a spiritual level, if, if you're not present for the helping of yourself, then you can't logically get upset when somebody's not there at your aid at your at your perceived time of need. It's it, it's more about that community level of help in that way.
thoughts so far? Ma'am. Um, at what Enabling? Yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> it's hard because we want to see those dear to us uh, and we want to see people thrive. Um, the best illustration I can give you of that is work related because I've been where I'm at for over five and a half years now and over that time, you know, we talk, we, we pride ourselves in being a place of second chances. We will hire somebody on that has a record so long as it's not specific things and we and we will give we don't have we don't have like the attendance point system that some other companies do. You know, you go work at some plants or some places it's hey, you know, you're you're absent, you got one point, here's your target, here's another point, third point, you're gone. If I did that I wouldn't have any workers because of where I'm located and a number of other factors. So we already operate with more grace than uh, we probably should in some cases, but but the question becomes: At what point is that one person that we continue to allow to get away with it? At what point does that become a detriment to the rest of the team? And I've had to have some some conversations with some of my leaders and say, okay, here's here's where we're at. This person here here's where here's where we've been through counseling. Uh, I understand they're a body. I understand that they help you in this way, but is it worth? the turmoil that they're causing because because in some ways that's demoralizing for the rest of the team who's showing up faithfully who's here on time who's doing their job and then to see one person who is a standout whether it be through tardies whether it be through laziness whether whatever it is and and we have to make that decision and there's times where not making that decision soon enough has cost us more valuable people somebody who doesn't think that we should put up with it as long as we do then they get tired of waiting and then they move on and then we then we've lost twice there's and that's in any part of life when friends loved ones it's there's no perfect answer in that other than searching your heart and in prayer asking what the difference uh what the difference is between offering honest help and, and enabling uh but at some point that there's people out there who just are not going to either truly be there to bear their own burden until there's nothing left underneath them except for the floor. That's, I don't, that's a hard question, right? Didn't help at all because it didn't tell you, it didn't tell you what you wanted to hear. <laughs> but it, uh, does anybody disagree with that? Any other thoughts on the, on that part of it? Well, there's just so many factors you have to take into consideration. Um, unfortunately, it's not a very clear cut. Uh, it's a situation specific circumstance as far as like an employee working in a place and uh, uh, just an infinite number of other factors yep. literally to take into consideration and to make those calls. At some point, call has to be made if it continues to disrupt or be a problem for you. Yeah. It certainly is not an easy situation to find people pushed into. Oh yeah. I had to before I moved out of Tucson I, I had to I had to get to a place where there was nothing else underneath me. Like I had no other uh, I, was, I didn't have anybody coming to my rescue to not bail me out of jail, but bail me out of the situation that I put myself in. And I finally resolved and made the decision to move back to Bullhead. Uh, I needed my wife. Um, and that's, that's when we met, was after I'd already at least gotten out of the bottom of the pit. I, I know, it's the first time I saw it. So.
want to continue needs. on that path and do your own self will, then there's the consequences for that. Um, now you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it burn. Right. You know? And that's if you want somebody's life to be better than they want their life to be, then it's always just going to be feeding, feeding the same problem because it's not. They're not gonna. They it, it's but a whole lot of speculation here. But it's they either feel like they're right where they want to be. They feel like they they feel like if they get out that like, another slippery slope. You know, there's uh, marriages that either the couple thinks they're staying together just for the children or they separate because of the like there's there's a whole dynamic of and it all comes down to, to personal will and, and personal mindset and, and personal uh, values and and where they are in life but but back away from that is like I said is if they don't if they either don't see a problem or if they don't think the problem is as, is as bad as uh, as it truly is and if they can't be shown uh, that then it's going to be all the harder. So before we can effectively help to wash them off, we have to get them out of the pit. If they're if they see the ladder and they refuse to take the first step, all we're doing is creating more mud by by washing by washing off in the mud. Why is it a learning process? Yeah. Because you learn faster. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. We left off at verse five. Was every man bears his own burden? Uh, verses uh, six through ten. Because uh, we got just a few minutes left. Let him that is taught in the word communicate to him in, that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. So if we're trying to sow into somebody else's life the good seed and we're trying to give them the word and give them a, a flower garden and all they keep planting in their own field are weeds, it's, not, it's still, not, no, still not bearing the right, the, the right complementary fruit. Um, Romans six eight says, "If we be in debt, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that He shall we shall live with Him." So if Paul at one point, uh, 1 Corinthians fifteen says, "I die daily." He's, uh, when Jesus tells us that we have to uh, we have to die to ourselves, we have to pick up our cross and follow Him. That's that's a giving up of the burdens that we've already taken up in this world and this, and and bearing a cross that is much lighter. Uh, it's still not without it's not without trials and persecutions, but it's being knowing that that suffering does not compare to all that God has to give us, and knowing that God will not be mocked. What we sow in, in our lives and the lives of others will reap thereof. What people sow into their own lives, you have to help them. You you have to find you have to determine if it's even your job. To help them recognize the fact that what they're sowing is not going to reap well, or if you're supposed to just instruct them on the first part and somebody else's and somebody else's job to come along, and it's still it's still an uncomfortable conversation. It's still an uncomfortable place to be. Uh, let verse nine. Let us not be weary in well doing. You know, don't get tired of it, and and don't you know under, understand that our timing and God's timing are not the same thing. We feel like. Things should happen immediately. We feel like we should be spared from so much. But he says, in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Don't give up that good fight. Don't stop progressing towards and start and working towards bearing your own burden, work, continuing to work out that salvation, continuing to work out uh, each of those issues so that we can do so for our lives as well as those around us as we have the opportunity let us do good unto all men and it does say especially to them who are the household of faith but the first part of that says all so that we we know that we are living in a world where we are with believers and non-believers daily we're with a a, a group of people of varying uh, thought processes life choices and 
and everything. Wherever you have the opportunity, do good unto others. You have to show people what they're missing out on sometimes. And and sometimes it's, it's and once again, it's not about us. It's not about an outward spectacle of look how look how blessed my life is because I carry this Bible around, read it, and come to church on Sundays. It's look at the change uh, that has been made. Because whole other conversation, uh, you know, Jesus went back to Nazareth, Nazareth and, and told them, you know, it'd be easier, it, it's easier for a stranger to come in and tell you something that's, that's meaningful and hard than to find your, bro your brothers or sisters or somebody close to you. It's, hard, it's all the harder to get through to somebody who knows you than for, for a stranger to in a lot of cases because there's, a, there's, already, a, there's already a knowledge there, there's already a, a relationship there, there's already, there's already bonds that uh, were formed in a time of your life where things were different. And a lot of people, pe there's, there's people out there who have a hard time believing and understanding the change that Jesus makes in our lives. And there's, I have friends who, uh, that I, I still talk to periodically a uh, few of them uh, are very knowledgeable and, and under, understand where I'm at now. And then there's others that I haven't talked to in a while that would just look at me and baffled knowing that I stand up here today. It's, people are interested. But verse 2, bear one another's burdens, fulfill the law of Christ. Verse 4, let every man prove his own work and then have rejoicing in himself alone, not doing it boastfully. Verse five, every man bears his own burden. And then verse nine, don't be weary in well-doing. In due season, you shall reap if you faint not.